So let's move directly to specific endocrine glands. And one of the important endocrine gland is what is known as the pituitary. So this is just a sketch of a pituitary and we will discuss the main parts of the pituitary in relation to the hypothalamus as we move on. So as you can see here, you have the anterior pituitary, which is this side here, which has a glandular-like um, look, and we also have the posterior pituitary. So we do have two parts of the pituitary gland, also known as the hypophysis. So the other name for pituitary is hypophysis. So we do have the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary is also known as the adenohypophysis. Adenohypophysis meaning that it has a lot of glandular um, cells, so it is a creature in nature. Um, and one important thing that you need to understand about the adenohypophysis, uh, it actually originates embryologically from the Rathke pouch, and the Rathke pouch is invagination of the epithelioid cells. So, because you do have epithelioid cells here, um, this tells the reason why you have um, adeno-like cells um, which constitute the anterior pituitary. Making it different from the posterior pituitary, which is also known as neurohypophysis. So from the name, you can see that it has a lot to do with the neurons and it actually originates embryologically from neural tissue and that's why the cells that makes up the posterior pituitary are actually glial cells. So they are neuron-like cells. And you will see later that there is a very uh, close association between the neurons and the posterior pituitary when it comes to the hormones that are being secreted from the posterior pituitary. This is something that we'll discuss later. But for now, we already know that we have the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary, and these two parts of the pituitary glands have different embryologic origins. That, that's a point to note. So there's a very close association between the pituitary and the hypothalamus. So as you can see, the hypothalamus or the pituitary is actually a continuation of the hypothalamus. And you do have the pituitary stalk or the hypophysial stalk that joins the two. It joins the hypothalamus and the pituitary. And you have the pars intermedia, which is actually a, a dividing part uh, between the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. So these are the important uh, structures or important parts when we discuss the anterior pituitary hormones. A very close association with the hypothalamus, different origin of the posterior pituitary cells compared to those of the anterior pituitary, and you have the hypophysial stalk joining the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So the anterior pituitary secrete, or oh, it actually produces, it secretes uh, six important peptide hormones that we are going to see later. We, we have seen a lot of these, we have discussed them before. And within the posterior pituitary, you have uh, two important peptide hormones being secreted, but you need to note that these hormones are not being synthesized in the posterior pituitary. They're actually synthesized in the hypothalamus. So this, this is one point you need to note and we will discuss later. And this is where you have what is called neuroendocrine because they are synthesized in the hypothalamus and then transported in the axon and then secreted within the posterior pituitary. So we'll discuss details of this later. So again, we have um, the pituitary, the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary is made up of different cell types. We have somatotropes, and these are the cells that produce human growth hormone. Another population of cells is what is known as corticotrophs, and these produce uh, adenocorticotrophic hormone. We have another population of cells known as thyrotropes. These are the ones that produce uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. And we have gonadotropes uh, producing follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And we have lactotropes producing prolactin hormone. So you have this population of cells. But you need to know that 30 to 40% of the cells of the anterior pituitary are somatotropes. So this is the majority uh, of cells within the anterior pituitary. And you do have about 20% corticotropes. And the remaining 
thyrotrops, gonadotropes, and lactotropes occupy around 5% each. So we can see that what we are trying to um, mention here is majority of cells within the anterior pituitary are growth hormone producing somatotropes. Another point to note is when you stain somatotropes, they actually stain with acidophilic dyes. And for that reason, somatotropes are known as acidophils because they stain with acidophilic dyes. And this is important because when you have tumors that produce growth hormones, sometimes are referred to as acidophilic tumors. So you should not be surprised when you see growth hormone secreting tumors being referred as acidophilic tumors simply because somatotrophs stain with acid dyes and they are known as acidophils for that reason. So when we move uh, to the posterior pituitary, as I said, one big point that you need to remember about the posterior pituitary is posterior pituitary hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus. So they're actually released from the posterior pituitary. They're actually secreted in the posterior pituitary, but they are not synthesized in the, sorry, they are actually released in the AS posterior pituitary, but they are not synthesized in the posterior pituitary. This is a big point, and this is an important point, and this is where we have the neuroendocrine effect, because these cells are synthesized in the hypothalamus, transported in the axoplasm, and released into the posterior pituitary, where they will be secreted into the blood circulation to bring about effects somewhere else. This is an important point. And the neurons that transport these uh, posterior pituitary hormones are known as magnocellular neurons, and their cell bodies are located in two main parts of the hypothalamus, one known as the op supraoptic nuclear, and the other one, the paraventricular nucleus. So you do have two parts of the hypothalamus with cell bodies that synthesize posterior pituitary hormones. You have the supraoptic nuclear and the paraventricular nuclear. And then this will be transported in the axoplasm of the magnocellular neuron. This is an example of magnocellular neuron. They will be released into the posterior pituitary, and then they will be secreted from the uh, posterior pituitary into the circulation to bring about the desired effect. This is an important point to note.